Hi, it's Elizabeth from Tarot of the Wind, or Sylphie Tarot if you're on Tumblr. So just tarot stuff from Tumblr. I am me last night a link to a reader's questionnaire, which was posted by the graceful Wendigo, uh, and suggested maybe I want to do that, and I was like, yeah, that sounds great. I think everybody else has been posting just write-ups, but I know I would write a ton of stuff, and nobody wants that wall of text in their dashboard. So I was like, oh, I'll just do a video. Uh, I'll link all the stuff below if you're wanting to check it out, maybe see some other people's answers. Question one, how did you get started? So in middle school, I got gifted a tarot deck for Christmas, played around with it, packed it away because I didn't really have anybody to, else to read for or connect with on that, and teenager me just was not committed to actually taking it seriously and taking the time to learn it, you know, because I was just like, well, I can just read the book. That's good enough, right? Um, went through college, dated a guy, then that fell out, moved back home. Um, found my old tarot deck at that point, and I needed some serious soul healing, I needed reassurance that the future was going to be okay because I was pretty torn up and didn't know what I was going to do with myself at the time. Um, so I was like, okay, I'm going to take the time and I'm going to learn this because what else? You know, I don't want to like dump my baggage on my friends constantly. Like I need to figure out how to self heal here. And I was like, we're going to do this. So I just kind of studied tarot at that point and as a self-healing tool. Question two, how long did you study the cards before you could do readings? Well, I started doing them right away for myself. Uh, before I was comfortable doing them for other people, probably about three years. Uh, I'm a very private person, and I also live in the South, so I'm like, I don't really know if I want everybody to know that I'm sitting at home reading cards. I don't want to get burned at the stake. Um, so after a while, I was just like, you know what? I don't care anymore. This is a part of my life. This has healed me. This has helped me. I don't care anymore. Um, so I started coming a little bit out of the shell. I know you're like, you don't care anymore. Well, I mean, I don't have to scream from the top of a mountain that I'm doing something that a lot of people in my area would find very objectionable. I, but I wouldn't lie about it and I wouldn't keep it to myself. Um, and I did do a couple of readings for friends. I got started around that point getting involved with internet communities or just perusing them. I didn't join any until about two years ago and that's kind of when it really snowballed into reading for other people. Three, how do you interpret the cards? I am a by the book kind of girl. Um, I think because it is tarot and not an oracle deck that you should stick to the standard definitions. Now, each card has a whole storybook in them if you do not buy a minimalist deck. So there is a lot of wiggle room there and a lot to focus on and a lot to zone in on. But the card meaning is the card meaning, and that's kind of where I stick with my readings. Four, how do you choose cards for a reading? I, if it's a very, very, very tiny reading, what I like to do is uh, I will shuffle the cards fully till it feels right, and then I will cut the deck, top card, first card, and so we're talking like three, maybe four card readings. I will uh, just keep cutting the deck, and the top card is the card I pick. Now, if I'm going to do a huge reading, so like 10 cards, uh, this is going to be a good example of when I would do it the other way. I will just shuffle the cards completely, top cards. Um, how do I know? I don't know. I just, it whatever it feels right at the moment, and usually I've noticed I tend to go with more all the top cards if it's a larger reading, or I just keep cutting if it's a tiny reading. Five, what was the worst advice you've ever received? So I've never gotten advice, like, directly straight at me for tarot. Uh, so we're really going to just focus on maybe some of the 
repeat bad advice I see on Tumblr, and that's mostly you never have to leave the book. And no, you really don't, not if you don't want to. Um, some people really like to study and do an academic approach, and that's super respectable, but I noticed when I was comfortable to spread my wings and get away from the book, I noticed it was a million times easier to link the cards together, to dive deep in the meanings, and kind of like really play with my interpretations, whereas if I spent all my time just reading the book, they were kind of more shallow, and they were kind of closer to just regurgitating the information that was in the book, whereas now it's kind of more organic and from me, and uh, more in tune with... Uh, answering the question than like, oh, well, things are bad, or oh, well, things are good. The answers are a lot more in-depth, and they have a lot more um, meaning. Six, what was the best advice? Again, never really got advice personally for me, um, but the best advice probably was uh, a couple of my friends suggesting that I just actually start reading for other people. They're like, you could do this on the internet. You could, why don't you join like a phone hotline or something and get started with that? Like, you would be really good at it. And I can't say that I, they were right about me being really good at it, but I do enjoy that they, they pushed me to do that because it really just pushed my learning of tarot to another level because I was like, you know, yeah, I should just listen to my friends for once. And I'm my own worst critic. So when my friends suggest I do something, like I usually never listen on that level because it's like, mm, I don't think I'm that good yet. But at this, this point, I just ran with it. I was like, whatever, I don't think I'm that good, but we're going to, we're going to strive for that point. Cause I feel like that's a good mile marker. It's like, if I'm comfortable enough to read for other people, cold reading, then I probably know the cards well enough. Seven, do you ever do a reading for someone, but it turns into a reading for someone, something else? I haven't had this problem. And if the cards came up and I felt like it was for me, I would probably just punish myself and say I'm being a narcissist more than I feel like they would be for me. Uh, I just, I think when I pull cards, they are for the client. Um, that being said, I have had clients ask questions and about maybe romance, and the cards don't want to talk about your love life other than a quick, nah, -uh, honey, you are a hot mess and all this other stuff, and that needs to be your prime focus right now. I have had that happen. <laughs> and uh, while they do like their readings, um, a lot of people don't appreciate that. I noticed that. They're like, but I wanted to know about love life. And I'm like, well, that's kind of your problem. <laughs> you're putting everything else on the back burner when you shouldn't be focusing on that. And the cards are, whoop, that's, that's what's there. Eight, what do the court cards mean when it's not about a person? Um, This gets kind of like weird because I have a weird relationship with the court cards and kind of like I still haven't kind of figured out my general personal rule about court cards when they come up. And I've seen people are like, it's always a person, and I don't feel like that's right, but I don't feel like like making them another card in the suit is right either. So they're kind of like this amorphous blob just haunting me in my deck. They're like, ooh, what do we mean? For me, if I have a card come up that's a court card and it's not about a person, uh, I it's usually telling me that this person that I'm reading for needs to start taking on the traits of that court card. Or, like, say if it's a page that's kind of, like, an ace of that suit. If it's on the flip side, you know, also, it's like, you've got too many bad character traits right now, and you need to flip it. Um, so it's not a person, but it's kind of like, these are personality traits you need to either fix or embody. Nine. Where does the energy for a reading come from? You, your client, your cards, etc. I, I mean, physical energy, it comes from me. But in general, um, if we're talking about like woo-woo energy, 
I would say the universe and maybe just like a little dash of me and a dash of the client. Um, because I do a lot of my reading online. So it's definitely, I can't, I think the whole universe is connected and in some level the client ends up in there if I, because we did have that digital connection. So there's like that hook. Um, but yeah, I think it mostly comes from the universe. And that was the whole questionnaire. Um, I am more than happy to answer any other questions if anybody has them. I don't, I can't guarantee it will be a video, but, um, yeah, uh, have a lovely day.